Hi everyone, this is Doc Ina, and this is my lecture on the cardinal movements of labor. To download my lecture deck, please go to my WordPress site, Doc Ina Obigaine. Main reference for this lecture is William's Obstetrics, 24th edition, Chapter 22, Normal Labor. So we have seven cardinal movements of labor. We have engagement, descent, flexion, internal rotation, extension, external rotation, and finally, expulsion. So during labor, these movements not only are sequential but also show great temporal overlap. Now let's discuss the cardinal movements of labor one by one. First is engagement. Engagement is the mechanism by which the biparietal diameter of the fetus, which is the greatest transverse diameter in an occiput presentation, passes through the pelvic inlet, or what we call station zero. So, recall in previous lectures that we arbitrarily label the different levels of the birth canal as stations. So, we have station minus 3 up to station plus 3. And the landmark here will be the ischial spines, and the level of the ischial spines would be station 0. Therefore, if the fetal head has reached station 0, then we label that as engagement. The fetal head may engage during the last few weeks of pregnancy or not until after labor commencement. If the fetal head is freely movable above the pelvic inlet, then the head is sometimes referred to as floating or what we call unengaged. A normal size head usually does not engage with its sagittal suture directed anteroposteriorly. Instead, the fetal head usually enters the pelvic inlet either transversely or obliquely. So just to emphasize, so again, station zero is at the level of the ischial spines. So during engagement, the fetal position is either left occiput transverse or right occiput transverse. Sometimes it's in an oblique position also. The second cardinal movement of labor is descent. This movement is the first requisite for birth of the newborn. In nulliparas, engagement may take place before the, in, the onset of labor and further descent may not follow until the onset of the second stage. In multiparas, however, descent usually begins with engagement. So among multiparas, descent usually overlaps with engagement. Descent is brought about by one or more of four forces. The pressure of the amniotic fluid, the direct pressure of the fundus upon the breech with contractions, the bearing down efforts of the maternal abdominal muscles, and the extension and straightening of the fetal body. The next cardinal movement of labor is flexion. As soon as the descending head meets resistance, whether from the cervix, the pelvic walls, or the pelvic floor, the fetal head normally flexes. So with this movement, the chin is brought into more intimate contact with the fetal thorax, and the appreciably shorter suboccipital brigmatic diameter is substituted for the longer occipital frontal diameter. So if the fetal head approaches the pelvic floor or meets the resistance of the cervix or the pelvic floor, that resistance forces the flexion of the fetal head. So we have a conversion from occipital frontal to a suboccipital brigmatic diameter of the fetal head. And typically, this conversion reduces the anteroposterior diameter from nearly 12 to 9.5 centimeters. So we have a shorter diameter in the presence of a suboccipital brigmatic diameter of the fetus. So with flexion, the fetal position is still the left or the right occiput transverse position. However, the anterior fontanelle is less palpable at this point. The next cardinal movement of labor is the internal rotation. This movement consists of turning of the head in such a manner that the occiput gradually moves toward the symphysis pubis anteriorly from its original position or 
less commonly posteriorly towards the hollow of the sacrum. Internal rotation is essential for completion of labor except when the fetus is unusually small. So what is the fetal position in internal rotation? We see now that from a left occiput transverse, the fetal position is now converted to an occiput anterior position. The next cardinal movement of labor is extension. After internal rotation, the sharply flexed head reaches the vulva and undergoes extension. When the head presses on the pelvic floor, two forces come into play. The first force is exerted by the uterus and acts more posteriorly. The second force is supplied by the resistant pelvic floor and the symphysis and acts more anteriorly. The resultant vector force is in the direction of the vulvar opening, thereby causing head extension. This brings the base of the occiput into direct contact with the inferior margin of the symphysis pubis. Immediately after its delivery, the head drops downward so that the chin lies over the maternal anus. So what is the fetal position at extension? We see here that the fetal position is still in the occiput anterior position. However, the anterior fontanel now is more palpable. The next cardinal movement of labor is external rotation or restitution. If the occiput was originally directed toward the left, it rotates toward the left is tuberosity. If it was directed toward the right, then the occiput rotates to the right. Restitution of the head to the oblique position is followed by external rotation completion to the transverse position. This movement corresponds to rotation of the fetal body to bring its bisacromial diameter into relation with the anteroposterior diameter of the pelvic outlet. Thus, one shoulder is anterior behind the symphysis and the other is posteriorly directed. Now, what is the fetal position during external rotation? With external rotation, the fetal position is converted now to left occiput transverse. Finally, we have expulsion, which is the last cardinal movement of labor. Almost immediately after external rotation, the anterior shoulder appears under the symphysis pubis and the perineum soon becomes distended by the posterior shoulder. So after delivery of the shoulders, the rest of the body quickly passes. In summary, we have the cardinal movements of labor, which are engagement, descent, flexion, internal rotation, extension, external rotation or restitution, and expulsion. That's it for my lecture. Thank you for listening and please don't forget to subscribe in my YouTube channel, Ina Irabon, and my WordPress site, Dok Ina Obigayne. Thank you!